We're heading into Joanna Beach Campground, but you wouldn't think so because it looks like we're in the middle of Alabama. From the ocean to the jungle to this. What do you call this? The paddocks, the, the farm, the farmland. Little house on the prairie. 90% of the roads we've driven on have been just just farmland. But the farmland is very different. It's like crazy hills. Up and down, up and down. Construction. Our next journey on the Great Ocean Road was Joanna Beach. Reese's parents also did the van life in Australia some 30 years ago, so it is cool to relive their journey and visit some of the places they have traveled. Reese was especially excited for Joanna Beach because his dad spoke highly of the surf here. We had to check it out. We've made it to the humble abode. We were staying at Joanna Beach Campground and today it was pretty hot, so it was nice that we were just a short walk to the beach. Just went scurfing. I got like four waves. It was awesome. Missy is washing her hair in a bucket. It's been a minute since I showered. Here we have the little the little hair salon. All right, let's see. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> We're on to the next spot. We're gonna go try to find some platypuses, some platypi. Oh, it's raining! It's raining! Not really that bad, but it is raining. We're headed into the beach forest where we're gonna see some redwoods. I'll show you my redwood. I highly suggest doing the 30 minute detour inland to beach forest if you are ever driving the Great Ocean Road. It's stunning and has so much to offer. It was soon to become one of my favorite spots in Australia. But before we got there, we stopped at the Yahtzee Cafe in Lavers Hill to get a quick bite. They had some cute birdies there to watch. Damn, they're all coming in. California Redwoods in Australia, what? Closer to the beach than Beechworth, but still pretty far from the coast, the beach forest is filled with redwoods that are commonly found in Santa Cruz, California. It's ironic how we have to travel 8,000 miles to see something that was essentially in my backyard, but that's how it happens sometimes. It's also funny how far one must look to see what's right behind them. It goes to show that a vacation can be at the park across the street or to a completely different country. All it takes is the right perspective. You may be surprised what you see when you aren't looking. Yeah. Santa Cruz. I keep saying this is the coolest thing I've seen so far, but this seems like the coolest thing I've seen. Best spot to see California Redwoods, Australia. Who would have thought? Uh, Breeze takes forever to eat. I've been done for like 15 minutes. 
We're in the middle of the forest. Beach forest. Actually, really nice free campsite. Look at that view. We're gonna go check out another waterfall. Guess I can't drop my mixtape today, damn. Since we were settled into our campground, we went for a walk to see the Bochamp Falls. It was so nice, all downhill to get there. It's incredible. Only I didn't realize all downhill one way meant all uphill on the way back. But I'll find that out later. Meet me up. The 20 meter waterfall itself was one of the best ones we have seen so far. That's water for ya. It was straight out of the movie. It's surrounded by the most lush rainforest. Slowly but surely, we are turning into moss people. you to just be happy for two seconds. I swear you're always bitching and moaning all the time. Smile. That was just a joke. It, it, it was, we were just being funny. I swear, I'm not really an asshole. We're looking for platypus. No platypus. We come out and this guy's first got no front teeth. Um, and he comes out, he's like, oh, it's dangerous here. And I'm like, what? Like, he's like, He's like, yeah, I was like, oh yeah, no, we won't have a fire or anything, no worries, it's a total fire man. He goes, no, 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 you gotta leave. Like, it's, there's a huge fire danger here, and if you stay here, it's the worst place you could be in the world. And yeah. I was like, it was like, oh, and I kind of like shrugged it off, like, oh yeah, well, you know, <laughs> fires, you know, whatever. His scare tactic worked, and we're all leaving. Back to the Great Ocean Road. Awesome. We're gonna try some illegal camping tonight. Nobody's around. It is really pretty. Fingers crossed we don't get a ticket. Now we make tacos. It's taco time. Taco Tuesday. Is it, ta is it, is it Tuesday? Tuesday? It's sunrise, and we're gonna check out the 12 apostles. It's a terrible, terrible day for it. Hopefully it'll be pretty for like five minutes. I kind of doubt it, but we gotta try anyway. It was Missy's idea, Missy really wanted to do this. Putting my eyes in. Take the most important parts of your life and edit them together. Every memory played like a movie that only sells one ticket. What would you fill it with? Set the center stage for your spotlight and find that if you lie, you only end up fooling yourself. The sun is not always shining, it's not always a vacation, and everyone is just as insecure as you are. The high and lows that shape your fate act like the beating heart inside your chest. The only way to see a ray of light is if it is shaped by darkness. Some of the happiest moments of your life will come with the greatest stress. It's only in hindsight do we see how good the present once was. In all the best contradictions comes the paradox of laughing and misery. To make significant those moments you would otherwise forget. Expect nothing and you can accept anything. So what if life does not have a meaning? That's why you have to give it one. Write your story. Give yourself a call to action, a goal with risks, and of course, a good climax. And yes, conflict between who you are and who you want to be can be devastating. Paralyzed with the fear of lows, we let comfort be the coffin we find ourselves in all too often. However, in this one-man show, we play our own villains. Find the struggles inside yourself to make them your motivation. Failure shouldn't be what stops you from reaching that high. That low is simply the stepping stone from which you reach greater heights. I would suggest when writing your own story to add moments of being broke and broken. Leave spaces to fall in love and write in more dancing scenes. Be honest with yourself, forgive, and let out a good scream once in a while. Now you may be wondering what the Twelve Apostles has to do with this. Well, this was the climax of this chapter in my life. 
one of the main goals of the whole Australia trip. But you know what's funny? I find that the thing I actually cherished the most wasn't the flashy national park, but the moments spent alone, together, on the edge of a cliff. Chasing a setting sun and making a silly video with the love of my life. Don't get me wrong, I will forever cherish these fancy looking rocks, but at the end of the day, it's just a pretty picture. And as we know, life is more than just a pretty looking, heavily edited picture you show strangers on the internet. And that was that. So now we're on to the... Lord Ark Beach, I don't know. Lord Ark Beach. Here, wait, let me... Lock Ard Gorge Beach. Lock Ard Gorge Beach. It's windy out there. Well, we tried. Like my dad always said, if it's too hard, just give up. Oh yeah. Oh, that's so cold. I don't know if I'm gonna go in. Are you gonna go in? Cheese world! Cheese world? Have I even been in Wisconsin? <laughs> we have left the Great Ocean Road. That's it. It's over. It's done. What was your favorite part? I mean, the Twelve Apostles is something I was looking forward to for so long. It was the most important single thing for me. Reese saw it five times, he got emotionally attached, and I think he <laughs> might break up with to marry these rocks. I might take a piece of the rocks, turn it into an engagement ring. Oh. What was your favorite part? My favorite part was Otway National Park, I think. Or surfing at Anglia. Now we're off to South Australia. Victoria's pretty, pretty, over. Yeah, pretty soon here. It's over. Bye, Great Ocean Road. 